This is not how it's going to end. That's what I'm thinking as I make the call to 911. I'm sitting on the stoop at 15 Cornelia. For a few minutes, I've been in denial. The program downstairs ended at the cafe at 7.30 earlier. I did my five minutes at the mic and was rewarded with warm applause. It was Philip's event. I was feeling perfectly fine, except that I'd finished my glass of wine an hour ago, and I was thirsty. So when I'm making my exit, talking to a few friends as I pass by, my first thought when I feel the constriction in the back of my throat is that it's heartburn. And I ask the man behind the bar for a glass of water. It's cold and it feels good as I drink it down, but I only feel worse. I make my way to the stairs, passing some other friends. I tell them I don't feel good and I'm going home to lie down. As I climb the stairs, the most incredible pain begins under both arms down to my fingers. Upstairs, I rudely push past a waiter, making my way through the crowd and out onto the street. The pain under my arms is now excruciating, unlike anything I've ever felt before. As I approach 15 Cornelia, only 40 yards down from the cafe, I have to sit down. I realize even if I make it home, lying down until I feel better is no longer an option. I remember reading somewhere, not every heart attack involves chest pain. Sometimes it's pain in one of the arms, and I'm having pain in both. So I make the call to 911 thinking this is not how it's going to end. Time stretches, seconds dragging out as the phone rings, and then I'm telling the man I think I'm having a heart attack, and I'm answering his questions. He tells me help is on the way. We end the call. After an eternity, but maybe only a few minutes, I see flashing lights at the other end of Cornelia at Bleecker Street, but not coming down the street. I can't believe it. Someone got the wrong address? I force myself up off the stoop and walk toward the flashing lights, but now I see three firemen coming my way down the middle of the street, one carrying an oxygen tank. I stop and wait, and we walk together back to the stoop. I realize their fire truck could not make the turn. They give me oxygen, check my pulse, blood pressure. Suddenly the ambulance is here. A young woman and slightly older man get out and take over. The firemen help EMS put me on the stretcher and roll me into the ambulance. I thank them as they leave. Inside the EMS continue the oxygen and take an EKG reading and we're on our way to Beth Israel, him driving, her monitoring my signs. I'm wheeled right through emergency into an elevator up to a higher floor and into what must be an operating room where two doctors and some others are waiting. The pain abates as a local anesthetic kicks in. I'm awake through the entire procedure. A detached observer, as they run a catheter up through a wrist artery, look around and decide upon a course of action. Minutes later, it's over and I'm in a recovery room, a stent in the artery that had been blocked by plaque. Blood is flowing to that part of the heart again, and I'm experiencing an overwhelming sense of relief. The pain is gone. They never removed my wristwatch. I look at the time. It's 8.30, less than an hour from when I felt the first symptoms. They will tell me that the damage to the heart muscle was minimal, because so little time had elapsed before they started the flow of blood again. The ordeal is over, and I'm now on the long road to a full recovery. That feeling of personal immortality many of us have, who have never been seriously ill, well, that illusion is gone forever. So this is not how it ends. I've been given a second chance. God bless the firemen first responders, the EMS, the cardiologists who put in the stent, all the wonderful staff at Beth Israel. Now, if that night was my last performance, I could have been satisfied with that, Philip. But now I know it's not, and there's still so much I want to do. Lying here in the recovery room, I'm already thinking, if anyone asks me, I'll tell them that if you're going to have a heart attack, I can't think of a better place than at the Cornelius Street Cafe. <laughs> Hell, you're only minutes away from Beth Israel. Just remember to go outside before you call 911. You know how the owner, Robin, is about using your cell phone in the cafe. Oh, and I'm on seven meds now. 
one of which has the potential side effect of forgetfulness. Best excuse ever. Thank you. Beautiful.